I think this is all I have. Do you guys have any other questions? Thanks, j Hope. We have a couple of questions in the chat. Do you want to mm. read them or do you want me to read them? Okay, let me see. Uh, it's from the, uh, what is happening during warming up a stage? Why is it much slower? So that's the first Okay, question. so warming up stage, what happened is in general, so your your GPU frequency is kind of dynamic, right? So so what happened at the very very first run is uh, when once when your GPU is idle, your your GPU is smart enough to uh, drop your frequency to save energy, right? We need to save all the Earth, right? So because of that, if you push your kernel to the GPU at the very first stage, your GPU frequency is not high enough. So it's why the very first kernel performance is not as we expected, right? So this is for the performance measurement. Because of that, I just wanna uh, skip the measurement from the very first kernel launch. Because of that, the warming up process is slowed down. After warming up, the GPU frequency is high enough. And then if you keep feeding the, your GPU kernel, your GPU kernel performance uh, is, is high enough, right? So that's my uh, explanation. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I may miss something, but that, that's my understanding. Uh, what is another case? So, uh, yeah, see, for some reason, my cursor doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can so, read yeah. it for you. So, yeah. thank you. Uh, so, the next question is when using NCIS or NCU, is there a way uh, or a summary page to add on non uh, computer science users to quickly understand the commonly used CUDA API instead of Googling it, like for instance, memcopy or launch kernel and things like that? So that's a good question because uh, I'm also, I'm not from the computer science part. So my, 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 my specialty is a computational, uh, computational science, which is implementing some applications. So yeah, in many times uh, some, some, some information written in the computer science language is not really easy to understand, right? But uh, unfortunately, okay. So uh, unfortunately, uh, some parts, for example, the CUDA man copy and etc. This is kind of you 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 need you had better be familiar with if you use NVIDIA GPU system, right? So what I can say is, uh, if you go to uh, this uh, the the NVIDIA developer John page, right? And then if you go down uh, the, the documentation um, the page, uh, you can see a lot of details about there. So uh, maybe too much <laughs> at the beginning, but you need to spend some time invest some time, and 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 then. Uh, you, will, you will be able to figure it out, right? So, yeah, so another difficulty is uh, if you use NVIDIA system, you should know what's going on in the CUDA API. And then if you use the Intel GPU system and the AMD GPU system, they have also some corresponding different uh, terminology over there. So it's another complexity, but unfortunately uh, it exists. So sorry about that, but yeah, that, 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 that's what we can do. Yeah. Um, thanks. So the other question is why theoretical and measured uh, AI, uh, AIs differ? Okay, so in my understanding, so there are two, deep, two, two different possible cases here, okay? So uh, if I go to, okay, if I go to the, for example, in this case, right? So there are two possible ways. So first one is, uh, the data transfer is measured on the memories of system using the hardware, hardware performance counter, right? And then hardware performance counter, because it is some frequency of the collecting data, because of that, there is some possibility to get some small error from the hardware performance counter data. So hardware performance counter uh, may not really 100% uh, accuracy, but if you can say, if you, if you can get 99% accuracy, we are, I'm fine with that, <laughs> because this is hardware performance counter. The another thing is, uh, in this in this code, I just measured, I just counted the plots only for this main line because I I, I assumed that this line is repeated very large, right? But we also have some another uh, operation here, right? Some other operations, right? So because of these operations, uh, our theoretical uh, plot count can be slightly different from the measurement, right? So there is some kind of uh, possibility over there. So. Yeah, because of that, uh, uh, yeah, when I see the, this kind of difference, right? So 1.25 or 
you may say you may say this is really high, but if you see the scale of this this data, right? This is a logarithmic data, right? So uh, this uh, this is kind of ten percent difference, or five percent difference. But to me, this is really tiny. So <laughs> I don't know. It it, it it explain your question and it answered it for your question. I think it did. So the next question is: Is there a way to see how many registers a kernel is using and whether it splits to global memory? Uh, I think uh, NCU can provide that information. I, I think I, I I didn't investigate that part. So, but here we have uh, this is assembly line, right? And then here here, here is the live register, and I just uh, explained the sampling data, and then also the color map of this meaning, but it also has some instruction executed and then uh, some store dispatch and it has some, a lot of data, right? So if you're interested in, I recommend you to try the NCU and see uh, the older data uh, to invest to, to, to overview the older data uh, provided by the NCU. So, yep. Thank you. And then the last question is, is there any performance benchmark that can tell about the max performance of the A100 card? Max performance, which means uh, max performance of the plus, right? <laughs> so if you say max performance, uh, the, uh, I would say uh, the, the max plus rate and then max maximum uh, the bandwidth, both of them are important factors. And then also another part, right? So if you wanna measure the bandwidth, uh, again, you can use stream benchmark. If you wanna measure the maximum uh, plot rate, uh, you may try the, some gem benchmark. So gem benchmark, if you use, uh, if you saw the big enough array with the gem benchmark, you can hit the, the plot rate, yes. And then you can, you can, you can get the compute. And then another, another thing is uh, the Berkeley side, there is, uh, uh, the nice uh, the the tool to measure the the theoretical uh, loop. So uh, yeah, I, I, just, I just forgot the name. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's a tool. Uh, no, this is PD. Uh, ERT, yeah, ERT, empirical plant toolkit, yes, empirical plant toolkit. So this tool is one of my favorite tools. So uh, you can, if you if you if you run this case, it measured the maximum memory bandwidth and the maximum. Uh, plot rate, so you can you can you can get that information from ERT. So you can type the empirical plot toolkit and the Berkeley, and probably you can download it. So they they have uh, their own GitHub repository, so yeah, you can use that. Thanks. And then the other question is: Is there a way to see the CUDA cores that are being used in the code? CUDA cores being used. So how many? Also. I can say uh, the SM is kind of uh, the, I mean, it's a set of the CUDA cores. <laughs> so if you see uh, CUDA, the SMA utilization, you can see how much CUDA core you are using, right? So 99% means you use all, all, every CUDA course, right? So uh, I would I'd like to use that way. So you have uh, the for 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 given GPU you have uh, the the maximum number of CUDA cores per GPU, right? And then if you see the SM utilization, you can uh, estimate how many CUDA cores you're using. That's my case, right? A one hundred tensor cores. So to see uh, they're using. So I think uh, there are also metric for the tensor core. In this example, I didn't, I don't use a tensor core uh, in this benchmark, but if you use tensor core, I think uh, you will see the additional uh, information about tensor core. Uh, do we have tensor core here? SM, FMA cycle. Yeah, I don't see tensor core. Oh, here, tensor, five tensor cycle. Yeah, here. So yeah, this is uh, the tensor core utilization, I think. 
So I don't use tensor cover in this benchmark, so it has zero, right? But if you use tensor cover, you will see some some numbers <laughs> over there, I guess. Thanks, Jay Hawk. Um, so we are there any more questions? I think we had a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs>